sing a song in the past around 70s, 80s as Christians. And it has a very, very deep meaning in our Christian race in those days. Let me sing it. I believe as you are listening and you are watching, you will also remember if you have been a Christian around 70s, 80s. God is my father. Jesus is my brother and the blessed. Holy Spirit is my guide. The devil no relation for I am now creation and a member of the family of the Lord. We can sing it together now. God is my father. Jesus is my brother and the blessed. Holy Spirit is my guide. The devil no relation for I am new creation and a member of the family of the Lord. I believe God is your father, and the Lord Jesus Christ is your brother. And I know the Holy Spirit himself is your guide. And by his grace, therefore, has no relation in the affairs of your life. That a recent wife, that true of you. Go ahead and bless the name of the Lord, who has made himself available to be your father. Bless Jesus Christ who is now your brother, 
Bless the Holy Spirit who is now your guide. And that you have no relation at all with the devil. The devil had left you alone long ago. And by the special grace of God, all the attempt of the devil to move closer. The Lord has been blocking his ways. Bless the name of the Lord for freedom. The master Jesus says, If the Son therefore shall set you free, yes, I'll be free indeed. Magnify the only one who has set you free. The only one who has given you victory over the devil. God is now your father. You can look up. You can lift up holy hands and say, My father what in heaven. And I can see God answering you all the time. Bless the name of the Lord. Magnify him. For the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that is in your life. The Bible says the name of the Lord is in tower. And the righteous runneth into it and they are secured. Magnify him. God is your father. Jesus your brother. The blessed Holy Spirit is your guide. And therefore have no relation in your life at all. In the morning, in the daytime, in the evening, we can see the presence of God in your life. You can see the angel guiding you. You can see the almightiness of God supporting you. You can see the glory of God covering you all the time. You can see the power of the living God moving you all the time. Bless the name of the Lord. Glorify him. Honor him. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to pray that every attempt of the enemy against your life to pull you down, every attempt of your enemy against your life to truncate your life and destiny, that Almighty God is there, we arise and all your enemies will be scattered. Pray that prayer with all your heart. A message is coming this hour that is going to magnify God in our life in a deeper dimension. Pray that Almighty God today will put an end to every fault that is not of God in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, whatever will not allow you to reach your goal, whatever will not allow you to make it to heaven, pray right now that the Lord will deal with it. And the name of the Lord be glorified in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now I want you to pray for your continent. That the Prince of Peace himself will begin to reign. In your continent. Wherever you are, pray for your continent right now. That the almighty God. We put an end to all the crises that the shedding of blood of mankind will come to an end in all our continents. That the problem that we are facing with in crisis and war will end in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and that the name of the Lord be glorified. Let's pray that Prince of Peace himself will take absolute perfect control in all our nations in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are the over the king of kings. Your mercies endure forever and ever. Oh, praise his holy name. I say that God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are Jehovah, the king of kings. Your power endure forever and ever. Oh, praise his holy name. Our eternal Father, how can we be able to thank you enough? Considering all the miracles, all the signs, all the wonders you've been performing in our lives, 
And more importantly, the signs and wonders of and miracles of making yourself available in the abyss of our lives. We want to say thank you. That by your own decision, by your own plan for our life, you are now our father. Ah, we want to say thank you for making of your children. Jesus, we say thank you. Oh, Lord, we enjoy your presence all the time. We enjoy your grace every moment of our lives. We want to say thank you. Holy Spirit, we say thank you for how you have been magnifying yourself in every aspect, glorifying God, glorifying Jesus by using us to do those things that no man can do. Holy Spirit, we say thank you. You've been our guide, our guide. You've been our Lord. You've been our, the controller. You've been the compass. Almighty Holy Spirit, we say thank you. Please, Trinity, accept our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. We are here again today to call upon your name. Testimonies abound that Almighty God, you do answer prayers. You do answer prayers, oh God. We want to say thank you for all the prayers you've answered in the past. The one you are answering right now and the one you will still answer. We say thank you. We say thank you. Daddy God, we say thank you. Almighty God, we say thank you. Glory be to your holy name. Honor be to your holy name. Adoration be to your holy name. Thank you, Father God. For in Jesus' name, as we gather, we ask that today there be salvation, that today there be healing, that today there be deliverance, that today there be freedom, and Lord, only your name will be glorified. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let somebody shout another hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to appreciate our parents in the Lord one more time. And we want to announce today, again and again, that the prayers of our parents, they are seeking the face of the Lord on our behalf. God is even working over time in answering their prayers. Particularly on the matter, on the platform of prayer ring, what the Lord is doing is awesome. Every day, we have not less than 10 fantastic testimonies of the goodness of God across the globe, all over the world. Ah, we bless the name of the Lord for how our daddy, Daddy Gio, has been praying for us. How our mommy, Mommy Gio, have been praying for us. We feel the impact of their prayers. Just this morning, we read a testimony of a woman, the son wrote the testimony, who had total stroke with all one side totally paralyzed. Ha! The woman could not talk, neither could she lift her hand. But they heard about prayer ring. They wrote it right there. Till now, we don't even know where are these people doing it, whether it's here or there. They just lifted it up. And the Lord who answered prayers moved in. And within three days, that was surprising. Within three days, paralysis, stroke, no trace of any stroke in the life of that woman again. Not even the matter of um, practicing physiotherapy. No, 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 no. God just moved in. We can go on and on and on. Fantastic testimonies. We bless the name of the Lord. And we are trusting the Almighty God. The entire world now, they have a certain consciousness that there is a God who answers prayers. There is a God who does my fellow things. There is a God who answers prayers. And that is the joy that we have. So we want to thank our Father and the Lord. We want to thank our mom and the Lord. 
and all the entire leaders of the redeemed Christian church of God for your prayers. To God be the glory. In Genesis chapter 27, verse 45, we want to consider a message today titled, The Dangers of Anger. The dangers of anger. And as much as possible, as far as we can go today, we want to deal with anger in a deeper dimension. And then, add the Almighty God, call upon the name of the Lord to get rid of this virus from our vein, from our lives. Genesis 27, verse 45. Genesis 27, verse 45. Until thy brother's anger turned away from thee, and he forget that which thou art done to him, then I will send and feed thee from thence. Why should I be deprived also of you, I mean, of you both, in one day, here the father was speaking to his son, Isaac, was speaking to Jacob. Your father is filled with anger now. And because of that thing, I've taken notice in his life, he will kill you. Therefore, go away. I will observe him. I will take notice of him. Whenever I discover that the anger has been removed from his life, then I will call you that you can come back. Because I don't want to lose two of you at the same time. Because I know by the time two of you meet, he will kill you. And because of that one also, he may die as well. So in order not to betray both of you, let there be a separation. Brethren, there is a particular virus stronger than the coronavirus. That's a particular Pandemic, stronger than COVID-19. The name of that virus, the name of that pandemic is known as anger. And right there before our eyes, we have been allowing this thing to spread without getting rid of it from our society. What the anger I do in our society, I do in our family, I do in our home cannot be even explained now because of all kinds of atrocities that the anger had already done. Let us look first at the dangers of anger and then thereafter when we consider the source of anger. And thereafter, by God's grace, we will consider how we are going to, how to undo it. Now, first, the dangers of anger. Number one, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 4. Proverbs 27, verse 4. You are going to discover there that anger is a destroyer. There the Bible says, wrath is cruel, and anger is outrageous. Who can stand before envy? Anger is a destroyer. You cannot even withstand it. I want you to launch into the realm of prayer. If certain thing is a destroyer, that's the reason why. You run away from wherever you find coronavirus during the time of corona and part of this law, perhaps in your place also. 
And today, today you separate yourself from anyone that you know that is being affected or being affected with COVID-19. You isolate yourself. That way when it detected, we isolate some, some people. They were going to be quiet and say to say, do you know anger is more dangerous than COVID-19, than coronavirus? Because anger will definitely kill a victim, a very, very dangerous virus. I want you to pray right away. Say anger. Let God hear your voice. Say anger. You are a destroyer. Therefore, you are not permitted to dwell with me. Get out of my life now in Jesus' name. Pray, pray. And guys, as here to hear, he will hear you now say, Anger, you are a destroyer. Because of this, you are not permitted at all to dwell with me. I cast you out now in the mighty name of Jesus. Destroy whatever I decided to destroy you before they carry out the atrocities. Destroy it now. Command the anger to leave you alone. Anger, you are a destroyer. For this reason, therefore, you are not permitted at all to dwell with me. I cast you out, out of my heart, out of my spirit, out of my soul, out of my brain. Out of my memory, in the mighty name of Jesus. Anger, you are a spirit. I cast you out in the mighty name of Jesus. Get out of my life. Pray that prayer, pray that prayer. Have you taken notice of any level of anger in the life of your spouse, in the life of any of your children, in the life of any of your members of your family? Come on now. You are a destroyer. You cannot dwell. In the life of that fellow, I cast you out. I get rid of you. In the name of Jesus. Anger, leave us alone. In the mighty name of Jesus. Get out of our life. Get out of our life. Thank you, Father God. Because you've answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. How will you handle a lion when you have a gun in your hand? Ah, I believe you will release the bullet immediately because you know if the lion is permitted to come in contact with you, you may become the, the net breakfast in the belly of that lion. How will you treat a snake when you see the snake? The, all what you come out of mind is to kill the snake. And listen to me, anger is more dangerous than lion, it's more dangerous than the snake. You must kill it at all costs right now, out of your life. Let's look at another danger of anger. According to Proverbs chapter 27, verse 3. Proverbs 27, verse 3. You are going to discover there that anger is a load that will kill you if you carry it. It's a load that will definitely kill you if you permit it. To be on your head, you carry anger, anger will make sure that you are killed. Proverbs 27, verse 3 says, A stone is heavy and sound worthy, but a full rough is heavier than them both. Um, I don't know whether in your country you have this particular way of uh, building, but in the country where I am, we have something called tipa. They not can manage carry sand to the site when construction is going on. And they carry load, iron also, I mean, a stone also. Now the Bible is saying the tipa with that particular uh, gravel, with that particular stone is heavy. And the one where sand is heavier. Now, he said when you carry Anger on your head is heavier than the load of sand and the load of granite. Now, how can they ask you to lie down and they now tip upon you the load 
carry by that tipper. Say, tip it here, load it here, and you are down. Then you are dead. And the Bible is saying, when the anger is allowed in your life, that anger will make sure that you are killed. So when you carry anger around, when anger is permitted in your life, all what you are saying now is that, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to die. No matter how strong you are, anger will kill a man. Ah, whatever therefore is ready to kill you, why should you allow such a thing to dwell in your tabernacle? Cry to God now. Say in the name of Jesus, anger, you are a killer. Therefore, I refuse to carry you from today. Right now, get out of my life. Get out of my head. Get out of my heart. Get out of my spirit. Pray that prayer. You are doing something glorious now. You are doing something tangible now. To rescue your life. To rescue your destiny. Anger. You are a destroyer. You are a killer. Therefore, you are not permitted any longer to dwell with me. I therefore command you, get out of my life. Get out of my head. I won't carry you again. And many, many a day, they carry anger all about. Ah, wherever they go, they people know that they are angry people. Ah, anger. You are a destroyer. You are a killer. Get out of my life. Get out of my life. Get out of my life. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to allow you again upon my head. Ah, I won't carry you again. Anger, I will not carry you again. I command you, get out of my life. Get out of my life. Pray that prayer. Now, have you discovered any member of your family that you carry anger all about? Auntie, Calm down. So, I will not calm down. Auntie, cool down. No, I will not cool down, brother. No, 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 no. I will fight it to finish. Ah, anger will kill a man. Pray for that fellow now. Almighty God, I pray and I command anger in the life of so and so. If you know the name of that fellow, mention the name now. In the life of so and so. In the life of so and so. In the life of so and so. Anger, I command you, get out of his life. Get out of our life in the mighty name of Jesus. You are not permitted, anger, to kill that fellow. That is why I command you now. Get out of his life. Get out of our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Anger, get out. Anger, get out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Get out of his life. Get out of our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You know, the prayer like this is a unique one. It's not common. I don't know whether in your parish or the church where you go, if Andrew a matter like this, but God has the reason why he has led us to pray this prayer today. And I want you to know that whatever God knows that will not allow you to reach your goal, it will want you to get rid of it out of your life immediately. So I rejoice with you today. And I join my faith with your faith. That at that anger, that is trying to destroy your life. From today onward, they won't have power again. You have cast them out and they are cast out. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So we have discovered that anger is a destroyer. We have discovered that anger, as a load, will kill a man who carries it. Number three, an angry person is a dangerous person. When a man is filled with anger, that man is a dangerous one, a dangerous person. Proverbs 29, 21, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 9. The Bible says it is better to dwell in a corner of the top house, of the house top, than with a brown woman in a white house. Verse 19 says, Proverbs 21, 19 says, It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Now look at the first passage. In a big house, there are so many rooms there. 
that that fellow can stay. But the Bible is saying here, hey, you better run away for your dear life. You see an angry fellow, you're going to stay in the same room with that fellow. Hey, so it is better for you to climb the house. In those days, in the Bible days, we don't seal up our house the way we seal it now with POP. In those days, they used the wooden rod, the wooden rod to construct the roof. And right there, there's a place where you can hide. So it is better for a person to climb the roof and hide inside that room and sleep, and sleep there instead of enjoying yourself in the room while you are dwelling with a man, with a woman that is angry fellow. Anger, therefore, portrays a danger fellow. And God is saying you now, you have particular thing in your life that will make people to run away from you whilst you allow such a thing. That you are you have, you have facing west, the people will run to the north. When you are facing east, they will run to the south. So why should you allow? Because God is saying here, as an angry man, everybody should run away from you. That's what God is saying here. As an angry fellow, many, many a day, ladies, they are yet to be maritally settled because of anger. God will not permit an angry woman to get married to his son, his own son. Ah, God knows. And I, at times, you look at the way some people are behaving, you say, what? Such a thing will be get rid of because God is saying, as an angry fellow, you are a dangerous fellow. You should not, nobody should associate himself or herself with you because you can do and undo. Have you ever seen, have you ever not taken notice? When an angry man is angry, somebody is so gentle, somebody is so, fed, by the time he's angry, see people may not be able to, to contain the fellow. Anger is like an instructor, it's like a drunk. It's like somebody is drunk. I, 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 I feel with drunkenness. That's what the anger does. I want you to pray. Whatever that thing that will not allow people to associate themselves with you must go away from you. Pray right now. Anger. Anger. You are a dangerous fellow in the life of any man. Therefore, you have decided to endanger my life by making people to run away from me, by not allowing me to associate with people. Many, many a day who had run away from me who ought to, who ought to be my helper, who ought to be my, my, my helper in life, who ought to be my destiny helper. Anger, you've driven them away. I command you, anger, leave me alone from today in the name of Jesus. Get out of my life. 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 Anger, I command you, get out of my life in the name of Jesus. Get out of my life. In the name of Jesus, get out of my life. Anger, get out of my life. I command you today. Now I'm lonely. Nobody approaches me any longer. I've been abandoned. Nobody considers my life any longer. Nobody looks after me any longer. I'm rejected. Nobody embraces me any longer. Ah, I'm forgotten. Nobody remembers me any longer. Anger! See what you have done in my life. Get out of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray that prayer. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Nobody renders help because of my situation. Being an angry woman, being an angry man. Get out of my life, get out of my life, get out of my life. Everybody has turned their bars against me. Ah, anger. See what you have done in my life. I say, get out, get out, get out, get out. I believe you are praying. This is a serious prayer today. And you have to pray anger out of your life. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Number four. And I want ministers of God to take notice of this. Please. Ministers of God. Being called by God, ordained by God, 
anointed by God, sent by God. Listen to this. According to Exodus 32, verse 19, Exodus chapter 32, verse 19, ministers in anger can break the law of God in their hands. The law of God in their hands can be broken. When anger enters, that's what happened to Moses. And it came to pass. Exodus 32, 19 says, As soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. Moses' anger waxed out and he cut down the table out of his hand and break it. The thing didn't accidentally fall. No. For 40 days, Moses was right there collecting all this from God. 40 days, 40 nights, no food. No water. And God took the time to bring the law. The Bible says God wrote the law in his own, with his own finger. With his own finger. Ah! And coming down now, anger entered. Because what? Brethren, don't allow your members to ruin your spiritual destiny. Don't allow your members to finish you ministerially. Don't allow their behaviors. Don't allow the way they are handling the matter that so rich us as it were to allow you to break what the Lord has committed to your hand. Anger, anger, I want you to pray right now that in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever is that level of my behavior, of my life, of whatever anger that will make me to break the law of the law. Anger! I command you, get out of my life. Ah, Matoreke Sataya, with, the, with his hand, Moses broke the law. He broke that law. Ah, Babaye Kera, Rakazaba. Minister, pray. Members are there at times to make you to be angry. You will just discover what? And before you know it, you go against God. You begin to take this step against the Almighty God. Because members, they have brought you to a level where anger grew in your life. Ah, pray, pray, no wonder. Moses could not enter to the promised land because of this anger. Ah, whatever is going to hinder you from reaching your goal, ministers, from reaching your goal, pastors, from meeting your goal, ministers of God, pray against it right now that no one, no one, no one, no one, no group of people will bring anger into your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Ha! I've discovered the dangers. Let's now look at the source of anger. Source of anger. According to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1. There the Bible says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stop up anger. So we are, we are ever there are grievous words, anger will be produced. So whenever you meet people and they are saying something against your life, they are painting the picture of your life the way it is not. They have already uh, been, been, been acting in the area of propaganda. All what they said about you is a lie. And you begin to wonder, what? That fairy time market. Grievous words. Grievous words will bring anger. And when you consider this, you need to pray that God will guide your spirit. It will guide your heart. You know, at times, God can give you that grace. You will listen, but you will not hear what the people are saying against you. You listen to them. You will not hear. And God can give you that grace. So call upon the Lord now. Oh, God, that grace, never to be angry. Even when people are saying grief, your thing against my life. 
Give it to me now. Pray that prayer with all your heart. I don't know why. God is leading us to this prayer today. But pray, almighty God, the grace. Ah, look at Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. All kind of thing they said. All what came out of his mouth was, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. Ah, almighty God, there's a grace somewhere that will not allow me to react. Just the way they are treating me. Pray that prayer. Almighty God, give me that grace. Never to react negatively with all the negative things they are made against me. When I begin to think good of them, they are planning evil of me, uh, for me. Almighty God, this time around, give me that grace, that grace to have the mind of Jesus, to, mind the, to have the spirit of Jesus, to follow the footsteps of Jesus all the days of my life. Pray that prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The second source of anger is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9. We discover that anger will come for grievous wars. Also, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9, Fools produce, produce anger. A fool will produce anger. There the Bible says, Be not haste in thy spirit to be angry, for anger rested in the bosom of fools. So when you want to find the home of anger, the residence of anger, where anger dwells, just find out where a fool dwells. You meet anger there. And the question nowadays, who is a fool? It's a big question. Psalm 14 verse 1 defines who a fool is. Psalm 14 verse 1 says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. You can see the definition of a fool. Don't forget, anger dwells with any man who is a fool. And who is a fool is a man who is saying there's no God. In other words, when you see a man who is filled of anger, that man is saying there's no God. So an angry man is a man who has said there's no God. Because anger will come from a level of pride. You are talking to me like this. Do you know who, is, who, who you are talking to? Do you know me? Ah, me? That fellow has not placed himself in the place of God. God is no more in their equation. Somebody has crossed their road. You know, this is what I'm going to do. I have crossed my road. That is anger. So an angry man, therefore... Is a man who has removed God in his or is a person who has removed God in his or her equation. So when a man is angry, find out the thought of God is no more in the heart of that fellow. And now I want you to pray. Ha, pray right now. Whatever that thing that taking the place of God in my life, get out of my life right now. God is almighty. Ha, he's my God. He's my king. He's my master. Whatever, including anger, that are taking the place of God in my heart, I get rid of it now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anger, you cannot overrule God in my life. Therefore, get out of my life right now. God is still remain God. He's my God. Ah, pride, what are you waiting for? What are you doing in my life? Get out of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. So whatever anybody does from today, because God still remains my God, I will kill it in the name of Jesus. The name of the Lord be glorified. The power of the Lord be manifested. The Lord has a plan for my life. Whatever he decides, that's how I stand. That's the reason why he has said, hand over to me. So God, therefore, I hand over my case. I hand over my life. I hand over my destiny. And God Almighty, we are right for me. Therefore, anger, never again will I operate any longer on my home. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, listen to this good news as we are rounding up. Do you know, according to Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 32, Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 32, a mighty man is a man void of anger. If you want to get the real strength, if you want to be noted and be known, if you want to be recognized, if you want to break record, not just eating records, if you want to be known as a mighty man, get rid of anger out of your life. Proverbs 16, 32 says, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32, He that slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than, the, than he that taketh a city. You are a soldier. You don't want to a city. You took that city with, with all the mighty, that, the, the mighty that you have in your life as a soldier, in the army of your nation. Did that, Bible says somebody that is full of anger is stronger than that army. You are a mighty fellow, mighty whatever, either in politics, either in influence, either in commerce, either in education, either whatever. You are mighty. But when anger is there, your mightiness is removed. Anger will destroy whatever the value and value that you have in life. Anger! But never, never abide in your tabernacle any longer. Lift up your hand, therefore. Say, Lord, you are giving me strength. You are giving me the grace. You have made me to have what is called a level of being strong and strength in the area of discipline you are giving to me. Therefore, whatever I'm going to truncate my destiny in the field you have already planted me, I get rid of that thing right now, including anger. Pray that prayer with all your heart. Pray that prayer with all your soul. Pray that prayer with all your spirit. Thank you, Father God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, I'm about to pray for you. But before I pray, are you right here watching the particular episode right now of prayer ring? And you have not surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. You yourself, I want you to just begin to think about it. See what you've done against your life because Jesus was not there. How you've ruined certain things. You can be a witness. Then ask yourself a question. Since I've been struggling on my own, how far have I been able to go? That somebody, his name is Jesus, who will add value to your life, who will not allow your life to be ruined by the spirit of anger and the right here by your side. Give your life to him today. Surrender your life to him. Don't call upon him right now and be ready to save you and he will deliver you. To God be the glory. Having done that one, we like to hear from you. After the broker, you will see all the contacts on the screen. Write to us. I will get back to you. To God be the glory. All of us, lift up your hand now as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your faithfulness today, particularly in the area of the virus that will ruin our life. Anger. Thank you because you do answer prayers. Take all glory. We are ever anger is hiding in our life by the power in your word. Change it out in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, stranger, we hear the word of your power. And we trembling, they be chased out of their hidden places. We are ever anger is hiding. Check it out. Your word says, every tree you have not planted will be uprooted. Whatever that tree of anger that you have not planted in our life, including anger, uproot it now in the name of Jesus. I pronounce into your life, all of you, it shall be well with you. Whatever is the effort that the past has done in your life, the Lord will renew your strength. The Lord will move you forward. And from today onward, go and begin to fulfill destiny. As you have surrendered your life to Jesus, as you have committed totality of your life to God, and you are taking God as God, I declare and I declare, in your life, you begin to experience victory all the days of your life. 
Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Let somebody shout, a resounding hallelujah.